shall we play a game? Alright, let's get off the roof. I don't know why we're up there. I'll talk to this is just a bar person. We can look at him. Almost all the regulars are here tonight. Gentlemen John Killan, Isham Latimer, Rachel, Slippery Joe Mazer and his wives, Susie and Susan, Paul and Jim McDonald, Dink, Fogarty, and others. And there's also quite a few people you don't recognize. I think we can talk to Fast Eddie. Now, I, I heard, I don't remember this too well, but I heard that Spider Robinson, the author of the games, has something to do with Fast hey, Eddie, Jake, this character what's here. Going on? I nah, think that maybe he plays quiet. the piano, grab Lady or maybe does the voice, I'm not sure. I'll look it up and later, let you guys okay. know. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Uh, let's, uh... Hey, you would have loved the jukebox of Casimir's in Transylvania. No live music there? Maybe. Not on the night I was there. Barbarians. Oh... Don't, you know, that's one thing I don't like about this game. Whenever I'm done talking about a certain subject, it, it spits me back out into the game. What yeah. if I wanted to talk more? I'm chatty. I can't help Play it. Play it, Eddie. Something special you want to hear? Ooh, let's see. What should we listen to? Nothing special, something jazzy, something classy, something raggedy. Let's one ask for one of his specialties. specialties. Eddie? Eddie, you going to talk to us? He didn't talk to us there. I wonder what happened there. How about the drunkard song, Leather Zippo, Hol Zipper, Zippo Holster, Belaboring the Obvious, or Oblivion? Let's do the drunkard song. Why not? <laughs> Cute. Yeah, it changed, uh, changed the music. And they're singing. It's a singing song. It's a talky song. Very nice. Very nice. Let's see. Just taking a look around at all the various stuff. Really clock. Yeah, yeah, let's take it. You lift the clock off the wall and hide it behind you. Doc Webster looks at the empty spot in the wall and says, My, my, where has the time gone? You groan and replace the clock. There's an empty beer here. Can we take it? No, we can't take the beer. Uh, chairs, floor. Uh, this guy, this lonely, lonely wallflower. Yes! <laughs> So now I'm a world traveler. So I don't even know this I'm guy. Why am I talking to him about my world traveling? You seemed uncomfortable with them. May I ask how you happened uh, to come across that knowledge? How did you know you that? You answer my question first. Yes, I was very much uncomfortable there. I'm not used to hanging out with predators. It's Is understandable me? to be wary of what's different. Well, that's the thing. They weren't really different. Not at all. There was a great man who said, We have met the enemy, and he is us. Well, that was Pogo. But it's still applicable. Okay, I'm wary of that guy. How does he know where the hell we've been? Looks like we've got a fanboy on our hands, or a stalker. Uh, knickknacks. Take the knickknacks. You can't decide whether to take what looks like a hood ornament from a 57 T bird, the ceramic mermaid with a stomach where her clock ought to be, or the bronze Krunde claw. Krunde? Krunde? Stymied by the b stymied by indecision, you decide to take nothing. Oh, I wanted that. Uh, I wanted that mermaid. What's this thing? All right, I guess we're done here. Let's talk to Josie. It's enough dilly dallying. Jake. Officer Bauer, is this an official visit? I'm officially visiting, but I'm off duty. So you're not just waiting to slap the cuffs on Alfie should he happen to drop in. Far as I know, he's clean. Can a cop simply go out to a bar without being hassled? Am I interrupting something? Nope. Doc and I are just weighing the merits of various tropical beans. You're talking about beans. It's my opinion that chocolate, you know chocolate, right? The Abroma Cacao, which translates to food of the gods. Hey, food of the gods? No proselytizing. Ah, yes, now we have something to go with nectar with of chocolate. the gods. Doc, chocolate. on the other hand, seems to feel that coffee... Oh, well, when you say it that way, Ugh. I think that coffee, at least the way Mike makes just it... Just totally blessing, interrupted her. ...is easily superior to chocolate. More complex, more sophisticated, less reliant on sweeteners and vanilla and other additives, and less of them, an emulsifier. Coffee is so pedestrian, and chocolate has a lot less caffeine. What do you think, Jake? Uh, I wasn't really paying attention. That was kind of boring. Let's see, what do we think? What do we think of chocolate? Uh, they're both really terrible flavors. I refuse to get I involved. I refuse to get involved. I knew it. He's so non-confrontational. Ain't it the truth? I God think you're just wasting your time. 
You're looking for an objective answer to a subjective question. Damn right we are. And no matter what I say, one of you is going to want to poke my eyes out. Oh, come on. You can afford to lose at least one. Right. <laughs> Leave it to the hippie to just stay on the fence. Actually, wouldn't a hippie go on the more liberal side? I guess when you're arguing about chocolate beans, there aren't many sides to choose from. So let's, uh... Look at Josie. She's kind of cute. Maybe we can ask her on a date later. Josie Bauer is a member in good standing of the Time Police, an organization that doesn't exist yet. She's also a humor groupie. Win the pun day night contest and she'll accompany you home for the evening. <laughs> Doc keeps winning. Damn his eyes. So basically, if you win the pun day night contest, you'll get some poon from Josie. I don't know if that's awesome or if she's a slut. You're talking about beans. It's my opinion that chocolate... Okay, all yeah. right. Doc, on the other hand... Oh, well. Cough... I don't want to do this again. I want to go on the... I want to go on the damn mission. Maybe if I say they're both really great flavors. They're both really, really terrific flavors, okay? Sheesh. Oh, that's a good answer. How awfully decisive of you, Jake. Yeah, well... Party hard. I can't win. And I'm used to winning all my arguments. Jake, you can afford to lose at least one. Right. <laughs> they just keep agreeing with each other in the end. Let's see, maybe if I talk to Doc. Let's see. What have you got for time lag? <laughs> no, no, I don't want more riddles. I don't want to hear any of this. Ah. Jokes, thank you very much. Now, there's a deer park in the north port of town. Perfect for Huntington's of pheasant. You can't miss it. To be sure, it's in plain view. Uh -oh. Oh, God. Here come the puns. People of Long Island, duck. I thought we were going to have Told a Told you to get used Montauk. to them, people. These puns do not stop. The next thing I know, you'll be singing Come Back to Jamaica. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm just Bayside myself. Yeah, sorry. It's a cent to reach that far for a joke. I would bury you if I could think of a topper for that. Sorry, this is the point where I slip out. Doc, you can babble on all you want, Todd, but personally, I'm against it. Free port for everybody. Jesus Christ, those are the best puns I've ever heard in my life, people. A chone, the local equivalent of a cheer and a groan, goes up from the crowd. I, I guess the chone kind of sounds like... <sighs> Doc hangs his head in surrender. Doc surrendering. Now there's a sight not often seen. I prefer to think of it as a scene not often sighted. Jake? Yeah? Are you really buying a round of port for everyone? No. What? Okay, I thought not. Look at Doc Chortle over here. All right, Josie, give me a mission, please. Give me a mission. It's my hey. Yeah. Doc. Oh, cough. <sighs> if I tell you which one I really prefer, one of you is gonna be pissed. That doesn't matter. Just speak your mind. Yeah, just be honest. Don't worry about losing one of us as a friend over something as trivial as I can as lose a friend yeah, over a chocolate debate? You can afford to Damn, lose what kind of friends one. do I have? Right. Well, I guess I prefer chocolate on a more sensuous level. See? This is anecdotal <laughs> evidence. It doesn't prove anything. If he had said he liked coffee better, you wouldn't think so. Oh, of course I would. How did all this come up? Ah, uh, here we go. Finally! To go all through that to get to the mission. Josie reaches her pocket and unfolds a small brochure, which she this then hands to you. This is for my time, Jake. You skim the brochure. It's an ad for a brand of chocolate you've never heard of. It also outlines the process by which chocolate is manufactured, from bean yeah. to bar. Here, look at this paragraph. She snatches back the brochure and points to a particular paragraph, which she the shoves in your face. The greatest chocolate is believed to have been grown in one small area in the Brazilian rainforest. Unfortunately, this discovery was made too late to save the grove of trees, later designated Theobroma cacao ultimisarum, and exists only in a couple of pods too damaged to be viable. Jesus Christ, the Jake, read a little slower, okay? He's a worse reader than I am. As they were destroyed by the Fax and Castoroga Pencil Company during its clear-cutting operations in Boa Vista. It goes on to reveal when the grove was believed to have been destroyed. When's that? Tomorrow. This tomorrow? You mean tomorrow, ah, tomorrow? Shit. That'd be the one. I think you I should head time right travel. over to Fax and Castoroga headquarters in Manhattan and stop them. It's nighttime. Doesn't have to be. What do you say, Jake? Want to come along? You're a folk singer. You know how to raise your voice in protest against the pig dogs of the fascist military industrial complex. Interesting words from a cop. You with me or not? All right. 
We can actually refuse, but we want to progress in the game, so sure, let's do why it. why not? Maybe we'll go down in history. All right. It's a wild goose chase, I tell you. You ready to Plus, start, maybe or do you she'll stick sleep with us if we go with her, huh? Huh? Let's see. I am ready, ready to go. Ready when you are, JB. Great. Say your goodbyes if you want, and let's get out of here. It's blue, this popsicle stand. So basically, if you didn't uh, listen to Jake's monotone and monotone boring voice do that, um, tomorrow they are going to ruin a bunch of trees that have the best tasting chocolate beans ever. And we're going to go back in time to save these trees. So yeah. Save the chocolate trees. Screw the whales. Go save chocolate. Let's save our game. Uh, let's see, I'll save it as Josie's mission. If I can get it typed. 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 Jesse's mission. Right, let's get out of here. Uh, let's see. You step out of Callahan's and Josie follows right Ready? behind you. As I'll ever be. Follow me. Follow you anyway, baby. She walks down Callahan's driveway and out to 25A. You walk slowly behind her, curious as to why she's not taking her cycle or having you... And then it's going too fast for me to read again. She takes the driver to take you to the nearest Long Island Railroad Station where she pays for tickets and the two of you go to Penn Station. As you emerge from the dark, from the dank, urine-scented subway, you're surprised to see daylight. Hey, just how long were we on that train? So I rewound the clock a few hours. I thought it would be nice to give ourselves a running start. Besides, I figure we should start at the top, at Fax and Castoroga, and see if we can't just do this the easy way. Why'd we take the subway? Why not just zap us here? Or are the time police not supposed to take riders? Time we can handle. Space, we're not quite there yet. I want to go from time to time, I can do it. I want to go from place to place, I have to hoof it, just like everybody else. And here I thought you could do anything. No, I only do a few things, but I do them very, very well. If you know what I mean. So we tra time traveled back. We're in New York. She set the hours back. I don't think we actually time traveled. I think that's what she said there. I'm gonna save my gun because, like, I save my game again because, like I said, I'm terrified of the game crashing. So, so let's save. Um, now we're in New York. Let's see. Oh, that guy doesn't look shady at all. We'll talk to him later. <laughs> What is this, like, 1950s New York? Look at that pompadour. We've got a cop here, old man there. Here's this, the subway entrance. Um, not sure what we're supposed to be doing. Here's a cop riding some unfortunate ticket. Um, I say we start this mission by buying a pretzel. That's gonna help us. You give the vendor a dollar and he hands you a pretzel. You take a bite of the pretzel. It's soft, lukewarm, undersalted, and I a little bit gritty. You see, you Ow. spend money on something like that, you end up regretting it. And you spoil your dinner. You've got great maternal instincts. Don't talk with your mouth full. Oh, I have the pretzel now. Cool. We can look at it. We can't eat it. I guess he doesn't like it. One bite was enough for this decade. I thought New York pretzels were supposed to be good. Well, remind me to never buy pretzels in New York, then. Let's see. Masochist. Look at the woman keeps asking about various flavors of pretzels, and the pretzel man keeps telling her he only has one flavor. She must be from some Scandinavian country where they have whole department stores devoted to different fra flavored pretzels. Let's uh, talk to her. Wait. Uh, I can't. To. She's speaking pretzelese or something. Okay. Um. I want to. I want to take this pretzel, the one that's hanging. You attempt to buy the lone pretzel, but the vendor refuses, saying that this particular pretzel is his lucky pretzel. Now wanting to ruin the guy's luck, you pretend that that's not the pretzel you really wanted anyway.